So, Marav, what are the Voyager spacecrafts, and why are they important? Why should we care about them? Um, well, um, Voyager, we have two spacecrafts, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Um, they are in two. It's just a luck that happened that it's turned out that Voyager 1 is going near the direction where we are going through the interstellar medium. It's on the northern hemisphere. And Voyager 2 is on the south on the side. And it's just for several maneuvers that happen throughout its journey that the two of them are piercing our bubble in two regions in space. Uh, so we're lucky that it's happening. Um, we are more exciting about Voyager 1 right now, um, although Voyager 2 is very exciting as well, because Voyager 1 is very close uh, to leaving our protective bubble, the heliosphere. So we are all excited looking at the data daily, basically, to see what's going on is changing very rapidly. So what people seem to be talking about now, and what they're excited about, is the suspense over when is Voyager 1 going to leave our solar system and yeah. go into interstellar space. Yeah. What is that? How far away is it? Can you help us imagine it? Um, yeah, a good analogy, I like to say, it's um, like leaving our backyard. So it's imagine you're living in a house and somebody bring you blindfolded to your backyard uh -huh. and you have no idea how big is a backyard. When are you going to leave your house and start adventuring in the neighborhood? And so this is what, what we are now. We are with the Voyagers going and we think, okay, we left the backyard. No, no, maybe we didn't leave. So we are in this, re this debate trying to figure out when we are really beyond the domain where the solar wind dominates. So how are we going to know when it crosses? Is it going to beat back and say, okay, we crossed? So this is part of like the, um, I think, amazing challenge. I remember when I, I started in the Voyager team, um, where a couple of years before we crossed the first boundary, that was a termination shock, and there was this big debate what the shock is going to be, uh, when we will know, when we will cross. And I thought to myself, you just open the book. You know what is a shock? It's a drop. This is what I'm expecting to see. And in fact, when the, the data start coming, yeah, the drop doesn't really look like a drop, and there is an increase before. The data is never, you know, people like to say that every time you are in a new area, um, the data is never like your textbooks. It's completely different. Theories have to be changed. So I think what we are experiencing in the team and in the next couple of months or years is it will be a very active debate. Did we cross? Did we didn't cross? Um, so I think there will be a continuous debate. The sun has a magnetic field. And it's, uh, we think, it's very organized in a certain direction. And we expect that once we cross this last shield we call heliopause, um, the magnetic field is going to rotate in a complete different direction because we will be experiencing magnetic fields that come from the rest of the galaxy that has nothing to do with the sun. So why are you so excited about this? You, sometimes you talk about it, you use these wonderful metaphors, like you'll compare something to a ballerina's skirt or you'll say it's like opera. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's poetic. I think it's uh, when I came um, to work in physics, I was not 100% sure I wanted to be a scientist. My dad is a scientist, my, my mother is a painter. I was like debating art, physics, what do I do? And I think the, the Voyager grabbed me completely, this mission. And the fact that you can have complicated theories being tested right there with the data, and you know, it's a dream come true if somebody tells you, you can work in the data that was never seen before. It's the first, it's first of many things. First time that we will cross any star. It's the first time we're going to be in this region, Heliosheath. And your ideas, you can bring new ideas to the table and being confronted right there with the data. So, and I think it's an amazing, I feel very like lucky that I was able to work on that. And also working with this, um, very experienced um, team, I think it's a challenge and it's kind of um, a gift too because they bring an experience, you know, how space science used to be done and, is, and you know, debating with them, it's also incredible. So. Sounds great. Thank you. <laughs>